Hi everyone, welcome back to Lecture 7K of Useful Genetics, where we're going to talk about the diversity of gametes and how to think about the roles of meiosis and mating together in producing the offspring. And this is a precursor to a detailed analysis of how to think about mating. So when a geneticist thinks about mating, they don't think about sex the way sex is in the movies, for instance. It's not the copulation that geneticists care about, it's the fusion of eggs and sperm. And this is actually a potentially very complicated genetic process because the genotypes of eggs and sperm can be so diverse. Even if there were no crossovers, because we have 23 chromosomes, we have two to the 23rd or more than 8 million combinations of chromosomes that we could put in our gametes. Each egg and each sperm choose, would choose from those. It's actually much more complicated than that because the number doubles for each place a crossover could happen. Even if we pretended that there were only, say, 250 places on the chromosomes where crossovers could occur, we would have more potential genotypes than the number of atoms in the known universe. So we can be confident that every gamete is genetically unique. Luckily, the gamete's genotype generally doesn't affect its chance of fertilization. And that's because the properties of eggs and sperm aren't determined by expression of the particular haploid set of genes that they carry. Rather, their properties are determined by the diploid sets of genes that were present in the germline cells that produced the gametes. There are minor differences. There are some differences in how fast X-containing sperm and Y-containing sperm can swim, for instance. But in general, genotype does not affect the probability of fertilization. So for an egg, the genotype is one random outcome from all the possibilities. And for a sperm, it's millions of random outcomes from the beyond billions of possible outcomes for that person. Now, when we think about a generation, we think about a series of events. First, we're thinking about what happens when the alleles pass from the parents to the offspring. And that has two components. It's got meiosis in both parents, producing the gamete genotypes. And then it's got fertilization, or mating, between random maternal and paternal gametes. And then that's followed by gene expression in the offspring to produce the offspring phenotype, also affected, of course, by the environment. Now, in this lecture and the next few lectures, we're going to focus on not meiosis, which we've already done, but on the process of fertilization and the consequences of fertilization for the progeny genotypes. And we're going to think about it first with fish. And we're thinking about fish because it's easier with fish to think about gametes coming together randomly because fish, males and females, both produce large numbers of gametes and they release their gametes into the water where the gametes then eggs and sperm randomly encounter each other. So it's easier to think about the events that we need to analyze. Now what we want to know is the progeny genotypes and the frequencies of these genotypes. To get this, what we need to do is to understand the process of mating by which the eggs and sperm come together. And to think about this process, we're going to use a diagram called a mating square I. Also called a Punnett square after the geneticist who first popularized using it. This diagram makes it easy for us to think about how the gametes are coming together to form the progeny. However, we still first need to know what are the genotypes and frequencies of the gametes. That's information that you're already now able to do because of what we've already done in this module. 
So what we've done, we've considered the variety of gamete genotypes. It's literally astronomical. And we've diagrammed one generation um, so that we can think about meiosis produces the gametes, and then a mating square lets us visualize the pairing of the gametes that produces the progeny genotypes. Coming up next, we'll talk about how to use the mating square to do this. I hope to see you there.